Hello, I am Mr. Sullivan. I'm at Kaiser High School, and today we're going to go through evaluating equations. So this is stuff that you know how to do, all right? You've seen it before, but maybe you forgot, maybe you struggled with it in the past, and maybe we're going to do a little bit more than you used to, but this is stuff that you need to know for, a few, for the future, all right? Congratulations on getting past 0 0.1, and uh, let's rock and roll with 0 0.2 today. So the first thing I want to talk about is GEMDOS. GEMDOS, you probably have heard in the past, maybe you heard it as PEMDOS with a P. I like GEMDOS. <clears throat> G stands for grouping. E stands for exponents. M stands for multiply. D stands for divide. A stands for addition. S for subtraction. Now, we're going to do problems today where we have to do GEMDOS, where we are simplifying an equation or an expression. So I go from the left to the right. But we're also going to be solving equations, and when you solve equations, you go backwards, all right? So let's take a look and see the difference between the two, all right? Part of the trick for you is going to be deciding which you need to do at which time. So I have this equation, y equals x divided by 2 plus 4, all right? Over here, we're going to do example 1 first. So... Solve for y when x is 10. So the very first thing I want you to do is rewrite the equation and plug in what you have. 10 is x, so instead of x, I put 10 divided by 2 plus 4. All right, now I'm looking at this equation. My variable that I want to get is all by itself. I don't need to move things from one side to the other. That means I'm going to do GEMDAS, all right, in the order it's written. So I have division and I have adding. So I'm going to divide first. So 10 divided by 2 is 5 plus 4. Now I'm going to add. 5 plus 4 is 9. All right. Now let's do this one. Notice the value is the same, but the variable is different. Now it's y equals 10. So I'm going to write 10 instead of y equals x over 2 plus 4. Okay, now I have to get this variable by itself. I have things on the, I have numbers on the same side as the variable and I need them to go the other side. When I move something from one side to the other, when I'm getting things away from my variable, I'm solving the equation and I need to go backwards. All right, so let's take a look what we have here. I have division, all right, division and addition. All right, so now I'm going to go backwards. So that instead of dividing first, I'm actually going to do the opposite of adding to balance this equation. What's the opposite of add for? Minus 4. And if I do it on one side of the equal sign, I have to do it on both sides. So 10 minus 4 is 6. Those cancel. So now I have x over 2. And x over 2 is the same thing as x divided by 2. That's our division. The opposite of divide is multiply by 2. If I multiply this side, I have to multiply this side. So x equals 12. And there you have it. So let's talk about tables for a second. First of all, this is how cool a table is this. I, I don't know what you could possibly use this table for, but it seems pretty cool to me, and I think I'd like it in my house. I'm not sure what I'd do with it, though. <clears throat> Maybe a coffee table. I don't know. Definitely not a kitchen table. Could not eat off, of that, off that. But let's talk about table tables, mathematical tables. Mathematical tables are ways to write you know, co coordinates. We have an A coordinate, B coordinate. A lot of times we have an X and a Y coordinate. Or two things that go together, right? Now we're going to complete this table. And some of these times we're going to plug in our A value and some we're going to have to plug our B value in. That means sometimes we're going to have to evaluate and do GEMDOS in the order it's intended. And sometimes we're going to have to do, uh, we're going to have to solve and do GEMDOS backwards. All right. So <clears throat> let's do the first one. Negative 3 is A. So I'm going to rewrite my uh, equation. B equals, when I come to my A, I'm going to write negative 3 plus 4 over 2. Now let's look what I have. I know a lot of you want to say this is addition, and it is addition, but what it's really doing is it's being grouped. It is being grouped. The numerator is being grouped as opposed to the denominator, and I have division. That's a tricky one, all right? So when I do my order of operations, I have to do that grouping first. So I have to add negative 3 plus 4, and I get B equals 1 over 2, and then I have to divide. Now, check this out. 1 half is definitely the same thing as 0.5. If you put 1 half in here, it is correct. If you put 0.5 in there, it is correct. I'm going to give you a very, very 
strange tip, because most of you don't like fractions, right? Going from 1 half to 0.5 is actually more work, okay? Now, you can do it, and it's not a problem. My only concern is that some of you, when we get in these fractions, you're going to go from whatever fraction this is to a decimal, and it's not going to be the same, and you'll get it wrong. Like, some of you will go 1 divided by 2, but you'll do it backwards, and you'll get it as 2. If you put 2, that's wrong, okay? So don't feel like you have to change those fractions. All right, let's do the next one. So, B equals my A this time is 0 plus 4 over 2. Again, I have grouping, so I have B equals 0 plus 4 is 4 over 2. Now, this time, I really do need to divide that. 4 divided by 2 is 2, okay? Go down to the bottom. In this case, I have B, so my B is negative 7 equals A plus 4 over 2. All right, now let's look. I have grouping. I have grouping and I have division. I have to go backwards. So I have to do the opposite of divide first. So the opposite of divide by 2 is multiply by 2. So that's going to be negative 14 equals, now remember these cancel, 8 plus 4. I'm going to subtract 4 on both sides. And I get A equals negative 18. All right. Over here now I'm going to plug in 10. So 10 equals a plus 4 over 2. Again, I have grouping and divide, so I have to do the opposite of division, which is multiplication. So now I have 20 equals a plus 4 because these cancel. The opposite of plus is minus 4, so a is going to be 16. And there you have it. Tables, so much fun. All right, now I'm going to do some modeling with this math. All right, we're going to make it useful in a real-world context. So we have a, a word situation here. <clears throat> the amount of money in Mr. Bean's wallet is $50. Take away $5 for each kid that asks for lunch money. So let's take a look. Mr. Bean's wallet, the amount of money, this is something that is changing, right? I want to find two things that are changing. And the number of kids is changing, okay? What else is important? is $50 take away, that would be subtraction, right? So I think we can come up with an equation here. So the amount of money, I'm going to call that M, all right? And over here it says define your variable. So I'm going to say M is the amount of money, all right? The dollars, all right? So the amount of money is 50, is 50 take away minus Five dollars for every kid. I'm going to say K is kids. So I'm going to come over here and define it. K is kids. All right. Now we can use this equation that we've come up with to model the situation and solve some stuff. How much money? So we're going to solve for M. Does Mr. Bean have if he gave money to all nine of his kids? So K in this situation is nine. I think it's a really big help to circle these and tell you what variable they are. Now it's easy to solve. I know I have m equals 50 minus 5 times k is 9 in this situation. So now I'm just evaluating. So I have subtraction and I have multiplication. I have to do multiplication first. So 5 times 9 is 45. 50 minus 45 is 5. And it's always good to have a label. So he's going to have $5 in his wallet, right? All right, let's look. How many children? Well, uh, that's kids, right? So that's our K. Did Mr. Bean give money to if he has $30 left? So $30 is my M equals 50 minus 5K. All right, now this one's tricky for kids. Let's see what we have. I have subtraction and I have multiplication. When I go backwards, I have to do the subtraction first, but it's not really subtraction. I'm really adding 50 here. I'm adding 50 to this whole thing, all right? So the opposite of adding 50 is subtracting 50, and that's a trick. So now I have 30 minus 50 is negative 20 equals negative 5K. See, I was adding 50 to this negative 5K. The opposite of multiplying by negative 5 is dividing by negative 5. 
So our K is going to be four kids. So he gave money to four kids if he still has $30 left in his pocket. Let's try another one. The student council needs to raise 400. So that it seems like a total, right? So they can hold a talent show and sell tickets. Every student ticket costs $2 and every adult ticket costs $5. So to get to $400, we have some student tickets and some adult tickets and every student ticket is $2 and every adult ticket is $5. So let's define those. So S is the number of student tickets, right? And A is the number of adult tickets. All right. How many adult tickets do you need to sell if you sell 200 student tickets? So this is going to be my S, and I need to find my A. So 400 equals 2 times my S of 200 plus 5A. So now I have some simplifying on this side. And we'll solve. So 2 times 200 is 400 plus 5a. I'm going to subtract 400. So 5a equals 0. And if I divide by 5, a is 0 adult tickets. So if we sell 200 kid tickets, we don't need any adult tickets. Nice. Oh, by the way, you know, it's always nice to box your answer or circle it. Um, in an ideal world, we all know where your answers are. But I'm sloppy. Some of you are sloppy. So help us out. Circle your answers. All right, so 400 equals, I don't know the student tickets, but I know I sold 50 adult tickets. So 2 times S, because I don't know that, plus 50 adult tickets. Uh, we, we know adult tickets. Adults times 5, right? So let's multiply that by 5. All right. So 400 equals 2s. 5 times 50 is 250. So the opposite of adding, I'm going to have to subtract 250. So 2s equals 150. And the opposite of multiply is divide. So S equals 75. And that means there were 75 student tickets. Again, a label is so good. So good. All right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to pause the video, and I want you to try these all by yourself. Legitimately try them by yourself. Don't just wait for me to put the answers, because I'm just going to put the answers and go through them. And if you've never tried one by yourself before you see me go through it, you're not learning. All right? So I need you to pause the video right now and try them by yourself. Because, again, if you don't learn, you don't move on. The sooner we can figure out what you don't know, the sooner the learning happens. And I hope that learning happens right now. All right? So pause the video not right now and try these on your own. So here we go. Here are the answers to the try. You try. Hopefully you pause this and actually try it. All right. Again, it's all about learning. And if you're not really trying, you don't know if you're learning. OK. Um, another big key point here is this. You need to really show work. If you just had these answers and you come up to us and said, I did them in the calculator. Well, that's not really great. All right. We're not picky on the work you show. In other words, if you say to us, I, I did it a different way than you. That's fine. We want to see what the way is that you did it, though. All right? Because if you get something wrong, which you're gonna this year, every kid has missed something, we want to see what you missed so we can help you out. All right? So when I plugged in 10, I just had to do order of operations, GEMDAS the right way. I got 13. Negative 7, same thing, negative 21. Over here, I had to solve, so I had to subtract, I had to add 7, then divide by 2, and I got a fraction 19 over 2 here. If you wanted to, you could have gotten, what is that, 9.5? That's fine as well. Down here, my equation I had A plus G equal 34, where A was the number of algebra tests and G was the number of geo geometry tests because he had some algebra and some geo, and he had 34 total tests. I came down here, and I knew that he had... 14 A's, so I plugged it in for A, subtracted, and I found I needed to do 20 geometry tests. 
All right, so there you have it. Um, best of luck on this section. Do what you can. Remember, the sooner you know you don't know something, get help from one of us. All right? Get help from a neighbor. Get help from another kid. Help another kid. We're all here trying to do the same thing, which is learn math. All right? The sooner you ask for help, the sooner you get help and move on. And we can't help you if we don't know. All right? There you have it. Take it easy.